family history books have a bad reputation for having boring covers. Hundreds of these books line the shelves of genealogical society libraries and archives. Since people judge the book by their covers, do you really want to project boredom even before your family members pick up the story of their heritage? I hope not. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee, and I love helping you write your family histories so that your family will want to read them again and again. Today, I wanted to help you invite your family members to experience their heritage through better cover design. Hiring a professional is the best way to design a fantastic book cover. My friends at Stories to Tell or Pictures and Stories are champs at cover design. Some of you may want to attempt to design a cover of your own. While I love creating book covers and Photoshop elements, many of you will find that platform has a steep learning curve. Therefore, I will show you how to use Canva. Canva does offer free and paid memberships. And since I use Canva weekly, I have a paid account. Let's talk about a, how to create a stunning family history cover. Before you design an awesome cover, you actually don't start on Canva. You have to know what you have available. Do you have photos of your ancestors? If so, which ones stand out the most? In my Grandpa Lou's story, I love the photo of him wearing his military uniform. When it hung in the hall of my parents' house, I thought Papa's eyes followed me as I passed down the hall. Do you have photos of your ancestors that do that? <laughs> if you do not have photographs of a person, perhaps you have images of their home, family cars, military uniforms, dinnerware, or other souvenirs. A picture of where someone lived, worked, or worshipped, or the possessions they had offer a portal to the past and can serve you well as a cover photo. What graphics or artifacts do you have available if you don't have a photo? When writing my pageant memoir, I had two paper dolls created by celebrity doll designer Greg Nystrom. With his permission, I used the doll he made of me for the cover of my book. Photographs or paintings, drawings, or other graphics can be substitutes for portraits of an ancestor. If you do not have graphics featuring your ancestor, there are some other options. For example, a ship or a map or documents could serve you well for an immigrant ancestor story. A drafting table with slide rules and blueprints may serve well for a story about a carpenter. Before you design a cover, focus on the visual elements you uncovered while writing your family history. Then proceed to Canva to choose a template. Canva has a plethora of templates for many graphic projects. However, we want to focus on book covers. In the Canva search bar, type in book cover. Select the book cover prompt. Filter the thousands of templates to reduce choice paralysis. Based on what was available in step one, perhaps the photo style option may serve you best. Review the Canva template options looking for templates that do the following. Make sure the title is clear and easy to read, like this one, Think Outside the Box. An easy to read title avoids difficult to read fonts, like this one, before you go. Next, the title needs to be prominent. Choose a cover where the title is large and does not compete with other elements on the template, such as this one, Last Hope. Next, choose a design that is simple. While many Canva templates are really creative, Less is more with your project. Next, your photo should fit the layout. If you have a photo that has a critical 
element in the center of your image, you don't want to choose a layout like the Italiana cookbook that will block that critical element. Next, you want to choose a cover where the theme matches the story arc of your book. While the vampire cover is eye-catching, I wouldn't use this if your ancestor was a, on a journey as a service missionary and brought joy to everyone they met. After you select a template, Canva will open a workspace for you to customize. Resize the workspace to match the dimensions of your project. Click on Resize in the top menu bar. In the Custom Size field, change the unit from PX to IN for the U.S. publishers. Adjust the height and width. In this example, I'm going to use my favorite portable size of 6 by 9. Then click Resize rather than Copy and Resize. In step one, you discovered what you have available for your use in your project. Next, ensure that you create a high resolution copy of your photo or graphic. The minimum DPI is 300 and should be large enough to fill the size of your book. If you have a high quality image on your computer, then you can upload it to Canva. To upload a file, just click on Upload and then navigate to where the pictures are located and click on open after you select the one you want to upload. After it's uploaded, you can click on the picture that you want to replace, drag and drop, and now it is replaced. Now we can customize the template. Start with customizing the title. In this case, I will use Comforts of Elko. Since the title is too large for the templates, I have a few options. I can change the size of the box that I'm working with and I'm going to resize it that way. So I have to do a combination of stretching it down by dragging these handlebars and double clicking to change the cropping. And then I need to move the title out of the way, drag this other stuff down and bring it back. And now I can put it right back in the middle where I want it. Now it says the comforts of Elko and I'm going to change that title to a family history. Move that up a little bit. And now I'm going to change the title, the byline to me, of course. Now that that's in place, I'm not too sure I really like this icon. We're not really talking about food, but these folks are Canadian. So to change and add maybe a maple leaf, I can click on elements. I can search for a maple leaf and I can find one that I want. I don't want pictures, so I'm gonna click on graphics. And now I can choose one that looks interesting. I'm gonna choose this one, it looks like an outline, but if I'm lucky, I'll be able to recolor it. You'll know if you can recolor it by clicking on this color option at the top, click on that. And then here are the colors that are already in the layout of the book, that's kind of nice. So I want it to match the title. And so now I'm going to shrink it down by grabbing the handles and then moving into place. The next thing I like to do is to line things up. So I'm going to close that out by clicking the arrow. Then I'm going to drag this across all of my elements, come up to the thing that says position, click on center, and notice how everything's lined up. Before finalizing your cover, seek out feedback from like-minded family historians. Don't be afraid to share your cover design with others. Sometimes someone will see something you have overlooked. Now you don't want to share the highest resolution version of images online, so take advantage of the built-in Canvas share options. Click on share and then come down to share on social and then you can share to any account that you have. And Canva will not necessarily share the image, but a link to the image so people can come and view it and give you feedback. The other option is to click on share and go to download. And this time click a JPEG. Since you're just sharing on social, you don't want to share the highest print quality. So go ahead and reduce the size 
and reduce the quality of the image to make it smaller and click download. And then it will proceed to download to your computer. By the way, you may share your book cover designs in the Family History Fanatics Facebook group. Either I or someone else would be happy to give you some feedback before you go to print. Once your cover is complete, then download your final version. And because you're going to send this to a printer, we're not going to do the standard. We're going to do PDF prints. We want to switch to CMYK, which is best for physical print copies. We're going to flatten the images. If you have a publisher that asks for crop marks and bleed margins, you can go ahead and check that box right there. If it doesn't say so, go ahead and leave it off and give it a try. Then click download. And once again, it will save to your computer. Canva is an excellent option for those who wish to create a cover with little to no design skills. By using Canva, you will never fall into the trap of another boring family history cover again. Go ahead and give it a try and let me know how it goes. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. If you really, really like this video, then check out my website for additional training on how to write your family history.